Revenge Films. My name is Rachel Smith. I'm a 27-year-old with one daughter in preschool, and I'm a regular housewife. I met my husband through an arranged blind date, and we are now in our fourth year of being married. When we first got married, I thought he was a good person who really cared about his mother. But I am now left in despair. And as usual, I got a message from Thomas. I won't be coming home today. My mom said that she's making curry, so come over. And I'm just gonna sleep over there. Wait, uh, what about Naomi? What about picking up Naomi from preschool? Do I have to spell it out for you? It means that you need to go pick her up. A mother's job is to just look after her kids. You should watch and learn from my mom. If not, I'm happy to divorce you. That again? That's right. My husband, Thomas, was the most extreme of extreme mama boys. If he didn't spend time with his mother regularly, his stress would build up and he would throw tantrums in the house. He would suddenly go back to his family's house or go out for dinner with his mom. And I was always stuck taking care of our daughter Naomi by myself. And I kept having to quit whatever part-time job I had. More than anything, in order to make me prove that I was a worthy mother, like his favorite mama, he would always throw around the word divorce as he forced me to do all of the chores and child raising myself. What? Only $100? You're telling me to cover all the living expenses for our family of three with this? I want to be able to send even just a little bit to my mom every month. Plus, isn't it a wife's job to figure out the family finances through knowledge and compromise? He always says that everything is a wife's job as he demanded unreasonable things from me. In order to support our family finances even a little, I started selling my own belongings or some of Naomi's clothes that she outgrew already on the internet. The excitement of making one sale was the only thing I had to look forward to these days. But as I continued to struggle, on the other side of that was only Thomas's harassment and obsession with his mom that only seemed to be getting worse and worse. Every meal I would make, he would say that it was disgusting and slam it into the trash can before storming out to go eat his own mother's cooking. Naomi always said that she loved my cooking and would eat it with a smile on her face. That was my husband, but I felt like Naomi needed a father. So as much as I didn't want to do it, I decided to try talking to my mother-in-law about it. You said Thomas won't eat your cooking? <laughs> well, isn't it because you have a taste of a peasant? It's because you've only eaten cheap and tasteless things since you were little. Ever since the first time I met her, my mother-in-law would always humiliate me and she laughed in my face. Even though it was clearly verbal abuse, I would always grit my teeth and take it. I feel so sorry for Naomi too. She says your cooking is delicious, right? She's already got a tongue of a peasant. I don't care how much my mother-in-law said to me, but as soon as she started making fun of Naomi too, I had reached my limit. I wrapped up the conversation and stormed out of my mother-in-law's house full of anger. That was when I got a message from Thomas. It read that tomorrow he would be leaving on a vacation with his mother. Hey, that's enough already! Before you take care of your mother, you should be taking care of us, your family! Isn't that your job as a husband? It's not like I ever really thought about your happiness. Plus, obviously, my mother's happiness is the most important priority. Are you being serious? The only reason I married you is because your dad's company was starting to go downhill. So it was a political marriage. Your dad came begging to my dad, even though I didn't want to marry you in the first place. I had a hard time believing that my father would use me in a political marriage for his business. But if that were to be the case, then for my dad and for Naomi, I knew it was up to me. If all I had to do was tolerate it and work hard, then I desperately did my best to suppress my anger. It's not like you could divorce me anyway, right? Because you would only become more poor. Oh, that's right. The divorce papers are in the cabinet, so feel free at any point. Well then, I'm gonna get going. I could feel my blood boiling, but I took deep breaths and tried to calm down as I headed back home. I couldn't leave Naomi at home alone, so I called my dad and asked him to come over. When I got home, my dad was already in the kitchen cooking dinner for all of us. I hadn't been able to have my dad's cooking in a while, and it was so delicious. Naomi also seemed happy. It was such a nostalgic taste that all of a sudden tears fell from my eyes. Rachel? What's wrong? 
Did something happen? Dad, is it true that your company is about to go bankrupt? Huh? What are you saying? I don't mean to brag, but we've never once been in a deficit in the history of the company. What? Then what about my arranged marriage? Two weeks later, the idiot mother and son duo who came back from their vacation went straight up to my mother's house. Waiting for them there wasn't me, but instead Thomas's dad. His face is as pale as a ghost. Dad, what's wrong? Are you feeling sick or something? You stupid idiot! Go apologize to Miss Rachel immediately! What? Why on earth should I have to go to apologize to Rachel? That's right. The boy is the husband supporting the family. He should do no such thing. How did I end up with such a stupid son? That day, when I told my dad what I heard from Thomas, it turns out that it was actually the opposite situation. Thomas's father was on the verge of losing his business, so he repeatedly begged my dad over and over again and pushed for a marriage proposal. My dad assumed that I would flat out say no, but at the time, I was so busy at work that I wanted to get away from it. And I agreed to meet Thomas. Much to my father's dismay, things moved really quickly after that. When my father found out about Thomas and his mother, he was furious and immediately called Thomas's father and terminated the contract with their company. Shortly after, Thomas showed up in front of me, pale as a whiteboard with a desperate smile on his face. He then dropped down on the ground and had his head in his hands and knees on the ground as he apologized to me. With the most pained smile and tears on his face as he dropped his head multiple times to me, standing behind him was his mother with a similarly pained smile and a sorry look on her face. Miss Rachel, Thomas is down on his knees apologizing to you, so you should forgive him. You will, right? And you're not going to apologize to me? What? But I haven't done anything, have I? If that's really what you think, then please go home. I don't want to see your face. I glared at my mother-in-law and didn't budge, and as if she gave in, she reluctantly got down on her knees and put her head on the ground next to Thomas. I'm begging you, Rachel. I was in the wrong. Please forgive me. I promise I'll take care of Naomi and I'll help out around the house too, so please come back to me. What do you mean, come back? We're not even family anymore. What does that mean? Are you going to divorce me? I'm not gonna let you do that! The divorce papers that you left in the cabinets. I've already turned them in. You had already filled them out and signed already. No way! What have you done, you stupid son?! You were the one that told me to do that, Mom! The two of them started blaming one another and eventually it turned into a full-on fistfight between mother and son. It was such an awful sight to see that I decided to shower them with some words that I knew would quiet them both down. I will be sure to collect both of the settlement fee and child support fees from you. If you get hurt now, how do you plan on working to earn any money to pay it? When I said that, the two of them froze mid-fight and slowly their faces started to crumble as tears came streaming down. At first, Thomas's father's company received a small contract from my dad's company, albeit a tiny one, and they were given work and managed to escape bankruptcy. And of course, after putting the company in the most dangerous position and nearly causing its demise, Thomas was fired. On top of that, after his harassment towards me and hiding his excessive amount of money with his mother, his father got suspicious and opened an investigation into Thomas. As it turns out, all the money he spent was on meals and holidays with his mother, and he was embezzling from the company. When it came to light, Thomas and his mother was disowned. In order to pay the settlement fee and child support fees to me every month, I heard that they're both working in a local supermarket. I moved back into my parents' house with Naomi. Perhaps because she was with the grandma and grandpa, I feel like Naomi was smiling a lot more than before now, too. How was today's video? If you enjoyed it, please subscribe, like, and leave a comment. Stay tuned for more.